speaker view. Um, Oh, I'm going to unmute you. Yes. How are you, Roya? Tanya, turn your microphone off. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, Wait. please mute your your microphones. Uh, I'm, if you're I'm, not muted yet, please. I'm I'm doing well. I have no complaints. I'm happy to be here live from my couch. <laughs> Are you working now? How, how has your life changed? <laughs> uh, my life has changed uh, in so much that I just really, I miss what life was like outside, even though I don't really like outside, you know? Um, I am working. Uh, a couple of my programs have shifted to virtual learning, so. So, so you're, you're still teaching? Workshop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Writing workshop. Still working with youth? Yes, absolutely. Um, and I mean, I, you know, I had a book come out and it was quite an experience to have a book come out with like a shelter in place order. <laughs> right. Happening. Um, but it's still been uh, very well received and I've been doing a lot more virtual shows and like launches than I ever thought possible. But that's good. That's good. You're still being requested. You're, people still want to see you. Word. That's the, awesome. The flame is definitely still on. That's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about your book. It's called Daylight. Yes. Right? And I, I read here that Daylight is a dazzling collection of poems from a necessary mm -hmm. new voice. Mm -hmm. At once, a clarion call for stories of Black women and a rebuke of broken notions of sexuality and race. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about who Roya is. Um, growing up, Roya Marsh was considered a tomboy passing with an affinity for baggy clothes, cornrows, and bandanas. She came of age in an era when the wide spectrum of gender and sexuality was rarely acknowledged or discussed. She knew she was different, her family knew she was different, but anything outside of her hetero norm was either disregarded or disparaged. In her stunning debut, written in protest to an absence of representation, Marsh recalls her early life and the attendant torment of a butch black woman coming of age in America. In lush, powerful, and vulnerable verses, daylight unpacks trauma to unearth truths, revealing a deep well of resilience, a cutting sense of irony, and an astonishing press, fresh talent. How does it feel to hear that? That I'm astonishing? that to hear an intro like that and and it's about your book right cuz you've put out chat books before i have them here i should have i should have pulled them out because i have your early works right of um the chat books that you have put out and of course just like your perf your performances your chat book the content of your chat book are powerful pieces extremely powerful pieces like if they don't if they don't evoke emotion from someone they're just dead <laughs> that's how I feel about it. So now that you've been published by Macmillan, right? They're your publishers. How does it feel to have a, a, a big publishing house like them? Honestly, it was, Especially with all this stuff going on, you know? Well, it's definitely helpful um, having a huge publishing house um, such as Macmillan. There's so much as because they are uh, like just well respected and connected. And I guess the amount of money that the people who work there are being paid is enough for them to still be working extremely diligently. Although so much of our lives have changed. Um, they check in with me like super often. Um, of course, it's not like a joyride. There's no magic carpet that we bump heads a lot because I'm like very adamant about the way I want things to be, the way I want things to look. But after a little bit of back and forth, eventually we have the compromise or I get my way, which is mostly what Good. happens. Good. But um, <laughs> it, it's very different from working with like small presses. Um, it's like the same day my book came out, Alicia Keys' book came out with the same publisher. So I mean, the dope thing was that competing against Alicia Keys. Not even necessarily competing, right? But the dope thing was that when they promoted her book, they my book was right next to it. 
But then, oh, like, the gift cool. and the curse is, who the fuck is looking at my book when Alicia Keys' book is right there, you know? Right. Somebody but, looking at that book. I hope you sent her a signed copy. Right. They, they, they should have. The guy who recorded my audio book also recorded hers, so he told me he was going to... an audio book? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to buy it now. I had no idea it was an audio book. Yeah. It's my voice, even the essay. I read every single thing. Yes, yes, that is amazing. That is wonderful. Um, um, when Elizabeth Acevedo's book came out, I love her performance, you know, her cadence, her tone. I love that. And I was hoping that she wouldn't get anyone else to do that audio book. So I was extremely happy to know that she performed her The Poet X in its entirety. Yeah. So I haven't read the actual book book, but I have listened to Poet X a couple of times. That's so now that's what I'm going to do with your book, because I love to listen to you performing and just reading your work on pages is just not the same yeah. as seeing you perform because you are a powerhouse. Oh, Anyone who sees you will know that you are a powerhouse. That is amazing. So we've been encouraging people to buy your book on wordupbooks.com. Um, also through our bookshop on bookshop.org. Um, we've added your book to our recommended reads. And um, we're hoping that everyone who's on this um, open mic goes and purchases either the audio book or the actual book and support um, this tremendous poet. Thank you, thank you. So, Roya, um, yeah. do you want to um, perform a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's a little bit? What you want? Pieces from, pieces from your book, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm this, is, this is all about you today. Everyone is here for you today. Oh, it's like it's my birthday. <laughs> I am, um, yeah. It's, sure. the, it's the birth date of your book. I like that. I like that. Um, I will start with a piece from the book. Like Angie said, the book is called Daylight. Who did the artwork? This phenomenal artist named Deborah Roberts, who is a collagist. Um, and also had her first like full super dope museum opening get shut down by the COVID. So we like oh are going through something very similar, although she's much older than I am. But um, it's definitely been uh, a super exciting journey that made it to this cover because that was also a point where the publishing house and I bumped heads a lot. Um, they had a vision and it really wasn't aligned with who I am as a black person at all. Can I ask you, were your, were your, is your team white? My, the, the actual person who signed me on is a uh, Dominican. Uh, who was he? Uh, who signed you? Uh, there's a Dominican in Mac at McMillan? Yeah, Danny Vasquez, Daniel Vasquez. What? See, now I gotta look him up. Yeah, you probably, you definitely run into him before. He works close with Cericia and the Bronx Book Festival and all that. Like, yeah, probably. You're My right. I probably but, yeah. have and just don't remember his name because last year I volunteered at um, the Bronx is Reading. Yeah. Um, and I met most of the, the team, but yeah, I'll look yeah. into him. Well, he's actually who signed me um, and was the editor of my project. See, also. this is what I say about our people being yeah. in these spaces and bringing and publishing our stories. Actually, yo, listen, is let me tell you something. And I'm not saying that this is like foolproof, but real shit, I was in the graduate program at Pratt and like I had this body of work and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm like, I'm done. And I just went on Facebook and I wrote a status that said, who is going to publish my manuscript? And a bunch of people were on there, mostly men, people who I know have even small presses. And they were like, man, I don't know who's going to publish it, but I know I'm going to buy a copy. And I'm like, oh, all right, skip it, skip it. One person um, hit me up and like, it ended up being a dead end. Danny was like, yo, well, um, I don't know if I can do anything for you, but send it to me and I'll share it with a few friends. So I sent him a copy and he like sent it out. And then he came back to me and was like, yo, like my boss literally stood in front of me and was like, why the fuck would we give this to anybody else? Like, yo, let's just do it. And I was like, All right, okay, cool. But it was all from a Facebook status. Like I wasn't, I wasn't shopping around. I was just like sitting down and like blowing into the wind just to be like, yo, I need this to come back to me, you know? That's what I tell people. You have to put yourself out there. 
You so also never know who you know either. Yeah, and, and even on Facebook, sometimes we accept people. We don't know who they are, who they're connected to. You just never know um, who's out there rooting for you. And look at that. Wow. So, yeah. but you're, you're, but besides Danny, your editor was, who was your editor? No, at Danny, Danny was an editor also. Okay. So, um, my publicist, is, I mean, it's a shit ton of white people there. Uh, my, the graphic designer was, uh, uh of asian descent and I mean everybody else is you know so who are the people that you got to fight with to get your shit done the way you want it done oh everybody danny included because he has to answer to other right people, you right. know and it's at, at some point i i felt personally this is unfounded but i felt personally like some of the no's i was receiving was based on people like believing that the higher ups would be like no as opposed to even asking them or showing them they're just like mm, i don't think anyone's going to agree to this and then when it all came down to it like it's it's in the project you know can you give us an example of things that you were asking and they were saying nah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so la language wise there were some things that the there were other um editors and and uh the copy editing process and then like the um past process where they send you like the first finished one and you got to look through that for errors and then the second finished one and all that there were points where like there were like grammatical checks and, and i'm and i'm like trying to just express strongly that this is poetry right and if it's street slang or it's a made-up word right. you got it alone why you know it's like especially if we went through this already like i didn't correct it the first time i ignored you like you gotta let it fly you know and then like for uniformity, it's kind of like, oh, you ended the word here with an apostrophe, but on the next line, you put I-N-G instead. And then I'm like, read the poem in its entirety. Like, oh, okay, cool, that's two different people. Yeah, precisely, like, <laughs> just read it. Take, read it slow, let's go line by line. But you know, like some of that, and then a lot with the cover. I mean, the uh, no shade to the graphic designer, but like, People read the project, they, that person specifically had never met me. Um, and we had only had email exchange, so never even like a phone call for them to hear what I sound like. But like the passes they were taking, I was kind of like, hmm, is this blackface? Or like, is like, is this what you think? Like, or who they're marketing towards. They're like, ah, you know, like it's for promotional purposes or for marketing, it has to be this or it has to look this way. And I was kind of like, huh, who are you marketing to? Because the language on the black of the book like clearly says who I wrote this to and for. Yep. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so this is, so we, we recently had a conversation about Dignidad Literaria, which is like dignity in literature, right? About representation and whatnot. And one of the things that I said that I was advocating for was writers such as yourself standing up to what we want from these publishers and not letting them dictate how our books should be put out or who you know obviously your book is not for white people that is not your audience it's dope and and nice if they enjoy your work and they're out here supporting it but that's not who you writing this for Word. right so that uh, it's sometimes it's just like why do you people want to dictate you know the the marketing and promotion because so that white people understand it because yeah. if you need validation from the white folks for your book but to be being the major thing too was like at one point there was a back and forth i think this was still about you know the cover and then like it was said to me like no well no one like across the world no author really gets a say so it was like well why would you bring me into this conversation and then tell me like I wrote a book about people literally bringing me into spaces and then telling me I don't belong. So why would you bring me into this conversation about choosing the cover and then be like, well, we were just trying to be cool. We thought you were gonna, you know, go with whatever. And I was like, no, well, I'm not. Like one of, the, one of them was the, an aerial view of a head and just like straight back cornrows. There is not a single poem in my book about hair, about corn, like none of it. And I'm like, did you like Google Queen Latifah and then say, mm, this is it? Like, what What did you find that made you think that that was it? Like, that that was even indicative of any of the tale I was telling, you know? Like, it just, and I was, and then, it, yeah.
it was nasty. It was nasty. But I do think that a lot of people, especially even I think in some of the language that's used, like a dazzling new voice and all that, like, you know, that's cute, but I've been doing this for almost a decade, right? And you to them. Precisely, right? But it's like you saying that, you know, makes it seem like I'm like putting my, you like just, kicking my foot through the out of nowhere. Yeah, like I'm, I'm not busted in here. I'm literally was walking very calmly and then I greeted someone and then I had a book deal. Like it was, it was real regular like that, a sunshiny day, you know? Well, I hope the bio in your book includes all, all you've done. It includes a lot of stuff, but you know, not all of it. I don't think there's room for that. You and also, your, your you whole goddamn resume. It. This ain't, this shit ain't new to me. What? It might be new to you, but it's not new to me. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that because I I always like to um, give emerging writers an insight on what you published writers go through. You know, because it's not it's not the same as being published by a small press or self publishing. The the dealing with the um, corporate structure of a big publishing house is quite different, and most of the times, our voices well, voices of Black and Brown people, Latinos, you know, LGBT you folks just don't matter they just they want your book they want to make money off of it that's it they don't want you you know give us the text we'll make what we need to make out of it to sell it as much as we can yeah so okay well, you could share your wonderful you know I'm gonna collection of poetry now i'm gonna jump in and read something from here but what you just said reminded me of something they're receptionist um in there is this older woman of color and I had come in and I was sitting on the couch and I was waiting for my editor one day. And then finally she was like, you, you've been here before? I said, yeah. You, she goes, you got a book coming out? I said, yeah. She goes, oh shit. And then like went online and pre-ordered it right then. And I was like, this really means something, huh? Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so great. That's yeah. incredible. All right. Um, so all of the poems in the book, uh, have similar titles in one way or another. They make up a poem themselves. In broad daylight, black women look grouchy. For within living structures defined by profit, by linear power, by institutional dehumanization, our feelings were not meant to survive kept around as unavoidable adjuncts or pleasant pastimes, feelings were meant to kneel to thought as women were expected to kneel to men. But women have survived as poets and there are no new pains. We have felt them all already. We have hidden that fact in the same place where we have hidden our power. They surface in our dreams and it is our dreams that point the way to freedom. Those dreams are made realizable through our poems that give us strength and courage to see to feel, to speak, and to dare. Audrey Lord. I tell myself to shut up before I ever utter a word, before a man inevitably does, before a lover tells me I'm ruining a moment. I say, shut up, woman. Just write it down in a text, in a tweet, in a poem, something easily digestible to be liked, shared, make them think, I didn't think, but just wrote the thing I don't have no business thinking or saying in the first place. I've been invited to perform more than I've been invited to speak. They want the art, not the woman behind it. Want the metaphor, not the matriarch. I feel like the world feels like I feel like the angry black woman. My senses tell me to fight. They always have. My senses tell me that physical violence is the only mode of protection that has served me. The world tells me this is wrong. I tell my students this is wrong. I want them to believe it. I want me to believe it. In response to this, I study, I write, I share with the audacity to exist, to speak, to progress. And the men, the men applaud and the lovers swoon. Word. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate snaps and claps. And Guadalice, you're going to have to tell me how you got your clapping hands to change colors, because that's why I won't use them. 
Okay. <laughs> so whenever you're ready, just drop it in the chat. I'm going to focus on that. Um, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, my feminism is visible. It's big breasted, smart mouth, often discounted and ignored, always wearing shades or throwing it. It's got bottom grills and three master's degrees. Is Tiana Taylor in that Kanye video, dressed like Queen Latifah and set it off. Ain't woman enough for the straight ones. Ain't man enough for the gay ones. It sags sometimes when I don't wear a belt. Shops in men's departments, hard, but ain't bulletproof. Is proof of the bullet. My feminism is Jesus, the real one, the black one on the cross, know the unk with locks. Yeah, crucified, yet broken free, cupping the world on its bare shoulders, can carry a baby, but ain't too sure about pushing it out. My feminism is mother, is a motherfucker. Wish a motherfucker would, might smile at you, but not for you, will grab Trump by his pussy, even though he's all asshole, gets catcalled and called dog by women and men who hate how masculine my feminism is. And it don't make women loyal, don't make them stable or stay, gets cheated on and called too feminine for having feelings about it. My feminism is exhausted of your expectations of being judged and denied and explaining its own femininity. I told y'all that you like to give y'all chills. I told y'all. Thank you, thank you. I, I know what I'm talking about. Go on, Roya. All right, all right. Uh, I will read another one from the book. Um, oh, all right. So I know where I'm going. I just got to find it. I thought I marked it, but I didn't. Um, thank you all, and thank you, Angie, for hosting on this platform. Um, it is, it is strange to like want community so much that I'm super eager to like sit on my couch and chat with strangers that are like in all of their respective homes, um, because so much has happened for me personally with all of this shift and everything, but also like this book dropping. And it's really just important for me that we are still engaging and celebrating with each other and like sharing in this art form that we so enjoy. Even if we don't think that we're the best or talented, like we do it because we want to, because it's freeing and it's liberating. And um, it's just, and also because it's just hella women on here. That's really dope too. I see your words and I see you right there. Right? We only have two men on this Zoom. And, and, I'm, and I'm excited. I'm happy y'all are here, too. I'm happy y'all are spending time. Just in It wasn't the- intentional, but it just happened sure. that way. But I'm not upset about it, you know? Imagine everybody could just be, like, eating vanilla ice cream out of the tub and staring at the TV. <laughs> but, but we here, you know? We in each of our respective here's, yes. but we're still together. That's right. That's right. I like that. I like that. Uh, in broad daylight, bruised black girls look goals. An erasure for Emily B. and Tony Nicole Wells. One and then the two, two and then the three, three and then the four. Then you gotta leave. Then you gotta, then you gotta. Yo, when I come through, man, it's not even funny. Choke holds too tight, left look too right. These bitches can't look, look, they hearts racing in the presence of the man. Your future, your past, the man, you. One and then the two, two and then the three, three and then the four. Then you gotta, then you gotta, then you gotta leave. What the world gonna say about a single mother? Same shit they say about a battered one. Question, what she do to make him go off? Answer, stay, fight, tooth and nail, call daddy. When your baby daddy forget he not your daddy. When your whole relationship been a game, a dress up and the costumes come off in front of the camera in front of the world, and you live long enough to be hashtagged into fault. Defense of the abusive black rapper stretches longer than Turkey Day leftovers, and you surplus crumbs from the dust of woman and color. Black bitch, gold digger, how dare you save yourself? We told you die so we could RIP you, sis. Look at Tony, gone from giving us life on the shade room to dead on a basement floor, and Barry gets life, but not her, devalued, dumb, doomed you know i do want to see both sides rip entry and exit wound repent and reform till then i wait and will and work till then i got a bullet with your fame on it one and then the two i'll be right back keep going 
All right, we'll be right here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have so many more poems. Oh, so the book, I got to do this really dope thing. I got to, hey, thank you, fire, fire, fire. Wow, wow. The rhythm is fire. That is true. Thank you so much, Marilyn. It's true. It's true. I wrote it myself. Um, I got to dedicate the book to the women who raised me. So this first one is a picture of my grandmother. And then the the next fold is my mother and my aunt. And so they're in books all across the world too, which is super fantastic and super exciting. You know, they're traveling with me. So even when I'm in somebody else's house, I'm not alone. Keep the roaches away. Um, I'm gonna read one more from the book. And then <laughs> I was looking for your books. Wow, oh, you got the throwback. Told you, 26. I was printing those for free at my office. I'm See, them. There's like, I forget how many, 26 poems probably? You got probably, any? Probably, maybe more. It's fire in there. And very simple, put together chapbooks, stapled together. Very simple, lovely. And it's then we had this one. Word. That was a little bit more professional. It was. It cost um, me money. I paid for that. Put together by two pens and lint.com. Uh-huh. They probably went under. <laughs> it was a mess. Look at Roya and her dress was so short. They were by her ear. <laughs> no, we started. Yo, my sister that's on here, Tanya, she 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 started them. She started what? The my dress? Life. Yep, she started yeah. my life. And my family was on the Zoom call earlier for my baby cousin's birthday telling me how long my hair was. Yes, it's super long. I've been there to witness the, 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 the growth. <laughs> from the beginning, from the beginning. Wow. So, yes, hit us up with another one. I got you. Um, this one is about my grandmother. In broad daylight, Black saviors look grandma or... I think I built that wall myself, or my grandmother would never play craps. I ain't never liked gambling. My grandmother's last ride was at a casino in Atlantic City. She could talk then, I remember, cause she called home in a panicked haze when the jackpot lights were all too much and she forgot the bus that took her there was the same bus that would take her back. My family took a gamble when putting her in a nursing home. She could talk then, I remember because she hated that place and was, of course, fed up with the incompetence of those in power. She saw the country take a gamble on its first black president. The best eight years of my life, the last eight years of hers. She was mute for years before the end. And I remember because she never wished me a happy 21st. Or maybe she did, but I wasn't close enough to hear it. I guess I forgot how to listen. I forgot how to talk to someone who could not talk back. Months before she died, this country took a gamble on red. She couldn't talk no more. I had been listening anyway, but I bet she had a few choice words for what would make this country great for the first time. He'd been ruined in this country 457 days. She'd been gone for 251 days. I've been going double or nothing with my sanity at stake, like going broke, gonna fix anything. I was gonna write this to her, but I keep telling myself she'll never hear it. I think I built that wall myself uh -huh. um and then i guess i can do one from my head because there's so many poems in there actually i'll read this one and then i'll do one more and then we do one of my favorite poems from yours i think is called bang oh shit i mean if yeah if you got that memorized still, Listen, I would love for you to still perform that. It's not that I don't have it memorized because I 100% do. It's just that, you know, we're going to talk. Let me read this. Then we're going to talk. We're going to talk. Um, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I, currently, I live in Queens currently, but I'm a Bronx native, um, born and raised. Exactly, exactly. Throw those exes up, right? Um, and for the last year and a half, I was living on uh, uh, 153rd in uh, Cortland, which is right near 149th Street and 3rd Ave, the hub. And uh, I had a run-in on a nice warm day with some uh, Hebrew Israelites. And so I wrote a poem in response to that. <clears throat> 
In broad daylight, Black Dykes look Gamora. Megaphone Jesus says, I am the abomination. When I pass his tribe on 149, with his Israelite robe and sparkly headdress, said my denim jeans were ungodly. One minute, I come from kings. The next, I'm the devil's plaything, both royalty and meant to bow to those that won't rise for me, at least not in my time of need. At least not if I don't bend knee, and that's just it. I, I was newbie in a moment ago, y'all. Right up until I ain't want to guzzle his kids. Even though I'm so good at doing what I don't want, like making men erect, but can't make a man erect a statue in my honor. Fuckable until proven dick-free, and he ain't even trying to know my name, let alone say it. His God and mine suffer a language barrier. How you create your own sect and still manage to worship a God that's more involved in my sex than my safety. How you preaching the word of your Lord and cussing me in the name of your crotch. Oh yeah, you believe the seed comes from the father. In Hebrew, seed is zephra. English translation, semen. Is that what you spitting? Or you been swallowing so long you don't know who shit you eating? Well flex then. Oh, you think I'm scared. Nigga, I crossed the Grand Concourse without the light. I still love Kanye. I still got white friends. I've been to hell, trapped inside my own mouth, a scorching of things I was afraid to say aloud. You think calling me an abomination makes me forget you still wanna fuck me? Silence a truth, erase a fault. Do you hear church bell sirens? Ordain me, a wannabe, man hater, man herself. Name me anything but beautiful. First, you pray out all. Then you'll call me pray. Well, today I renounce my God, like Peter, like Judas, like Longinus. I renounce my black, like OJ, like Tiger, like Raven. Today I am just a vessel that eats pussy. And even then, someone wants me dead in the name of a father who reigns only when he pleases. And here I go with the audacity to keep on living. I'm into going against the grain. Lord knows I want you to stay. Pray a roof over your head. Pray every Dylan roof away from NYCHA. That your brother remains your keeper. Wish your flesh be armor. I'll be miscreant, evildoer, the darkness, and still be the baddest bitch in the plaza. Yes! In Dominican, we say, toma! It don't hold up. That was a dope, a dope comeback, because those people get on my nerves. Yes. Like, yeah, like, it was it was a wild it was a wild time. And I'm glad that like I'm at a point in my life where I could write about it and like then be published as opposed to being on Bronx Twelve. You know, it's like a balance. It's a balance, you know. I'm just really trying to grow, you know. Word, word. <laughs> but it it would be dope if one day you just stand at the opposite corner of them while they doing their shit and you just start performing your piece. <laughs> right. But that means I would have to be the person that's walking around the streets with a microphone and an amp. Like I can't. I can't be that person. It's not in my it's not in my genes, I don't think. It's not. I don't have it. <laughs> That was really, really dope. Thank um, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I want to do like, I don't know, one more poem, but I, I, ju I, I definitely can't do that poem you asked me for. And I don't know. I don't have a reason as to why I can't. It's don't worry like, about it. Cause I remember is it's one I'm of those. Find, I'm going to find a video for you though. And I'm gonna I know I could share the, I could share the, the video. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. I just feel like right now in this current temperature and the fact that no, I'm no, I got it. I got it. Don't worry about it. Page afterwards. And, <laughs> Oh. Don't um, worry about it. But do you have any second favorites? Because I could close out with that. Um, let me shoot. Let me look oh, through shit. Because I will find. I, Roya, I have, I have um, lines of this poetry book underlined. I like that. Okay, like, that like things that, that spoke to me. Like, look, I have like pieces. Like, I, I wrote it. I wrote it with that in mind, you know. You know, this one, which one was this? This one was, um, I remember. I don't know if you remember that. I remember the day you told me it was over. I know I could think was, damn. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's old as hell. <laughs> well, you you put this out a long time ago. Yeah, that's old as hell. Let and me then you, you can only imagine um, how long you've been holding on to these pieces before you actually put them into a book. 
you you know i think that's the dope thing about this too like no piece and hit one piece is written in 2016 but like majority of these poems in here are like brand new it was like one project formed from my thesis so it's like really exciting to like every poem that i'm reading from the book is something that's like fresh and that's never seen a stage especially since we in a house how about future love poem do you remember that i don't know <laughs> and it's so cute it's like a love letter you know what if you want to close it, it reminds me of um um who who's the uh, the poet francisco what's oh, his Rudy francisco Rudy, yeah he's one of my favorite poets and all his poems are like dedicated to like an ex or to love or a future love or something or the other uh, i can read that i can read it yeah go ahead read it all right this is how you want to close this out with love <laughs> yes yes that's why we're here all right listen i just want to be clear that this poem was written in 2012 at at one thirty five a.m. That's the timestamp that's on here. So wow! Not only was I on your phone. Not only was I an infant, right? Um, <laughs> I probably wasn't talking to nobody. But I'm gonna read this. <laughs> I'm gonna read this. <laughs> How old were you at that time? I was born. That's the day I was born. That's <laughs> it. Right there. That's my birthday. <laughs> All right. We'll buy it. We'll right. buy that. We'll buy that. Go ahead. This is an open letter to the love of my life. Let me start off by saying, hi, I've been writing these poems for a while now, and I want to tell you some real wild shit, like I'll catch a grenade for you, but my hand-eye coordination just isn't as good as it used to be. I think I finally got the right idea of what I want to tell you. First, I love you. No, not like I love my cat, although he is the cutest thing ever, but... I love you like smell your morning breath, kiss the drool off the side of your sun kiss face kind of love, like give you a foot massage, even though you know I hate feet, but your boss had you running errands all day and I know your dogs are killing you. Kiss the spots you're most self-conscious about. A love so deep, even the silence between us is orgasmic. I fear what you fear, but my greatest fear is losing you. I love you like the sun loves the moon. You see, there's no greater depiction of love, sharing the sky for all time and allowing us to bask in their beauty. I'm mesmerized by your light and the way you shine from the inside out. Second, I spend most of my time lost in the galaxies that were somehow misplaced in your eyes. You will always render me speechless, but leave little room for me, just enough for me to find my way to your core where you've unknowingly hidden the stances of the most honest poem I'll ever write. Ain't, read it, ain't, ain't written it yet. So we're clear. Third, we will fight. That's just what lovers do. We fight each other, over each other, most importantly for each other. Those are the greatest fights, but we'll hate them. We say things we mean in the meanest ways possible, but sometimes amidst that heat, that passion, it's the only way we can get through to each other. That's unhealthy as hell. The best part about it, we make up. Ooh, baby, we make up, down, over, under shit. We fight a lot just because of the makeup. Sorry, Ma. And it's be cool because we'll always fix the issues. That's just the way it works when you're in love. Fourth, we will build. And due to storms, wear and tear, some bricks may fall, but our bond will be a confection of love, trust, and most importantly, us. People admire such craftsmanship and we laugh because we barely had a hand in the making. We just followed the blueprint God laid out for us. Fifth. I will leave my shoes on the shore for you. Dive in head first with no fear, even though I'm not that strong of a swimmer. I will wrestle sharks for you. No, I won't. Hopefully, I'm triumphant like that dude in Jaws, but if not, I will let him tear me apart limb by limb while in. Just know, whatever's left of me will love you still. I will never get used to coming home to the same face every day. It will always be the face I love more than yesterday. You will own the rights to my heart, and I'll have no fear that you'll forsake it as I'll have yours bruised and chipped from the fools before me, but still shimmering, just as when the Lord first crafted it. I'll cradle it, and you'll never have to worry about hurt again, because I just want to kiss you goodnight for the rest of my life. There's only one problem. I haven't met you yet, but I know you are not a dream. You're out there somewhere finishing this poem. So here's to hoping that one day we'll be done waiting for each other. Aww. Uh, what you, you think know, about reading that? 
That, was, that wasn't me. I don't know. First of all, I'm a thug. That's first and foremost. I'm from the streets, okay? I didn't write that. I don't know who did. Somebody was using Where did that come from? And you weren't even in love or anything. That was crazy. I think she'd be dreaming about it, maybe, wishing, hoping, and praying. I don't know, because, it, <laughs> nope. But it's wonderful to be able to look back in those moments and still and 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 look. You're looking at your phone at these poems that you wrote so many years ago, and to see to see where you are now. You know, That's telling two the chat books, two chat books later, and now a published <laughs> book later. What? It's amazing. You know, I I feel I I ordered your book, but now I could put it together with these two chat books. Like these are two yeah. of my favorite books, and now I have another one to add to my collection of your work so I love, I love that for real for real um thank you so much for joining us tonight and we're, we're gonna open the open mic because i know we got some people who want to perform in your honor let's get it so let's start sydney you want to go first all right all right we'll do this roya i just ordered your book on amazon <laughs> um I first met you at a Bronx open mic that Peaches was doing with Full yeah. Circle in that like crystal room or something out in the east part of the Bronx. And you were emceeing it and Elizabeth Velasquez was there and we were there and it was just so beautiful. So I was really excited to hear you put together a book for all of us to enjoy your beauty and your voice. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy for you. Thanks. I'll definitely be using that book in my classroom as well as an educator. I'm always bringing in the books, always ordering the class set. And, and you could bring her to your class too. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be in contact. So this, this poem here is um, in the recent Palabritas from Harvard's uh, press. It's called Castañuelas. I need to find my copies. <laughs> When I set foot in Castañuelas, it's people don't use a face recognition tool to note the grace of Mama Anta on my face. There, everyone greets me with an I see you nod. Declare me as family of the Campos elders and I reply, see. Sí. Soy sobrina de Rosa y Lili and I've belonged to this campo since, since the days my two-year-old bare bow-legged feet would run through Mama Anta's patio, it's guanabana slipping out of my hand as I ate them by the twos and threes. I belong to this campo since the days a local bachatero started claiming in his songs, voy pa allá, voy a buscar la mujer que me domina. And in his songs, I learned about the power of my p p parcela. I belong to Castañuela since the days I couldn't control myself from eating tamarindo quimalitos made from agua de canal, giving me the ultimate churia for days. You wanted to try all the flavors, my sister would say. El Campo is where this Bronx kid would spend summers, where food was accessible anywhere and everywhere, where the moment you entered someone's home, they brindate un cafecito, where you'd hear the radio host broadcast on Las Doce del Día, marking a sacred time of sitting with family, of businesses closing from noon to three so that people could come together and eat. El Campo is where hunger for time with family was seen on this New York City kid's skin upon coming off the plane. Some would say it was falta de sol, but in reality, it was lack of time with family, you know, falta de calor. Back then, I wouldn't know it yet, how the Bronx would become full of food deserts making us want to desert it, how the Bronx and El Campo were deemed as ghettos so that staying and investing in them wouldn't seem worth it. El Campo is where my elders live today, where during a recent visit, Tio Pupa told me, mira que blanco seco y desabrio están saliendo as we grab the platanos to peel, evir, and comer con leche. And of the six, three got placed in the trash. Míralos no sirven ni para dárselo las gallinas. He then turned to me and said how I've also planted a United States education in me and how the mind can become a vacant wasteland when its seeds become privileges focused on greed. Ten cuidado, mi hija, he said. No te vuelvas tan desabría, he said. No te vuelvas tan desabría que no sirves ni para dárselo a las gallinas. Thank you. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations again, Roya. Mad love for you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Marilyn, you ready? You ready, ready? 
I guess. Uh, this is my first time ever reading um, anything. So uh, thank you all. <laughs> thank you all that laid the path before me. Um, I'm excited to be here. So I've been writing um, poems this month from the prompts that Angie has been putting up. And this poem, I wrote it, um, it's about my aunt. And my aunt is in the hospital right now with COVID. And she also had a mental breakdown. So we're very worried about her. So um, this was the poem that I said, I wanna read this poem out loud for my Thea. Um, okay. So I'm a little nervous, but I'm gonna try to do my best. Uh, immigration story. Mama and Papa were already here. So mommy and most of her, so was mommy and most of her siblings. But they had to leave Esperanza in the campo porque no podían hacerle el viaje. The family had settled and was thriving in the Dom Dominican enclave in El Alto. The men were busy hustling at two jobs and mom and my aunts were working in belt and eyeglass factories. Then one day, a family crisis arose. Mandaron una carta con un conocido. Tienen que llevársela antes que se muera. Although no one could confirm what happened, dicen que a tía Esperanza le hicieron brujería y se puso bien mala. There was no way to expedite her trip, pero el tío más sabio de la familia had a brilliant idea. He'd get his second cousin's papers, marry his sister, para poder hacer el viaje. Everything happened so fast. El viaje al abogado, la fidavi con el sello del notario, la cita en el consulado. Esperanza arrived on a clear spring night. We went in Papi's Buick to Kennedy Airport. There she was with her perfectly done hair. You could tell she used the big rolos. She wore a pink mini dress, con ramos blanco, her nails long and painted a shiny pink. Besale la mano a tía, she said, y ponme una canción de Camilo Sesto. She was happy here, but continued to be haunted by whatever happened back home. The trips to El Medican Sente were at times frequent and other times lengthy. When she returned, she would have a smile and stories about the handsome doctors. All the best to your aunt, and we hope she gets better soon. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. All right, Eric. Eric, you the man. You there? Yeah, I'm here. You hear me? Yes. Roya, what's up, Roya? We don't see you, though. What up, words? <laughs> what up? If the lighting is bad, you want me to put the camera on? Put the camera on. I don't know if you'll be able to see me there. Yeah, Can you see me? Nice. Sup, Royal? What up, where's Roy, you know, I you know, I used to I used to call you the the, the champ because uh Roy had won the Grand Sand Championship at the New Rican Poets Cafe, so I used to call her the champ. But now I'm gonna have to call her like the real professional because she got she got uh she got published by the big boys. She got published, she in the big leagues now. She in the big leagues now, man. So I'm um, still broke, baby. Yeah, but you, but you broke in the big leagues, all right. You still in the big leagues, and I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you, and um, I feel honored. I, I've gotten to see like your growth. I remember you back in the day. You were going to everywhere, competing in every open mic. Like you was hungry, right? You're like, yo, man, people are gonna catch these bars. They may not know my name, but they're gonna catch these bars. And now it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I got a major league deal. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm professional, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they shut everything down. But you know, the people who are doing poetry, they wanna do it online and I'm the number one person they're hitting up. Yeah, yeah, Alicia Keys, yeah. They put my book next to Alicia Keys to make it look better. Yeah, that's just me, you know, that's it, right? I will tell you one thing though, right? Because I know where I will. I'm gonna say something bad about Rory, and all you gotta hear it. When I host a show, right? I hate when I have to introduce Rory because before the show, I'm always like, "Yo, Rory, um, what do you want me to say about you?" Just say I write poems. No, Rory, like you were the feature. I've got to say all these awesome things. Like, what award do you want me to mention? This is just say I write poems. 
all the time. And I do go up there and I'm like, yo, the best thing I say is Roy is in the witness protection program. I can't say anything about her. And <clears throat> boom. But um plausible deniability, you feel me? <laughs> so uh Roy Roy is Roy is the real deal. She is who she says she is. And especially in a day like this, like I appreciate people like that. So I only really came on to like, you know, big up Roya. That's that's it. You, you know, gotta read, got brother. You gotta perform, Eric. Come on. All right. All right. So, come on. All right. So, um, what I'm gonna read, what I'll read is, um, since, you know, I see this lot of in here, so I'm gonna try to keep it on that theme. And um, also, I appreciate that Roya's family's here. Roya, your sister, who's a coach, sounds just like you. I thought you were trying to prank us and say you were your <laughs> sister, but like, yo, sounds just like you. And um, so, yeah, since your fam's here, I'm going to speak about my fam, my mom. And the name of the poem is called On the Sixth Day. You know, son, my mother begins her testament. She confesses her understanding that I'm getting older. My body's creating urges. This is something that happened as a teenager. We had only had another block to go before reaching church. I had never felt more religious than I did at that moment. I follow up with a silent estimate of how many more strides we have to go before God save me. We were more than a few Hail Marys away. She uses adjectives like dirty and stupid as spearheads to kill any temptations of being promiscuous, let alone sexually active as a teen. I was too young to have children referring to me as our father. All I kept thinking about was getting extra dibs on the blood of Christ. As if I hadn't felt crucified enough, she crosses me. You know, son, sometimes I just hope that when you get that feeling, you know, it's okay to go into the bathroom and holy sh, holy sh, holy sh. I stop her before any more talk of sin embarrasses Jesus. In my world, Mary and mom are miracles given birth by way of immaculate conception. I refuse to allow the facts to sway my belief. I was prepared to be a fundamentalist son. A few feet from divinity's temple in blessed water, she lets me know the most important thing I am to understand are her. You know, son, I'd rather be having this conversation and going to church with you rather than without. Guardian Angel One, Dirty Panty Girl Zero. End of poem. Aww. <laughs> Such a nice poem. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And, Thank you and, for sharing, Eric. And it's a true story. We were going to church and my mother wanted to talk to me about masturbation. It was great. It was just great. But anyway, um, again, uh, thank you for having me share, Angie. Um, I hope you do this at least every month. I think you can see that your audience is enjoying themselves and they want to do this and they need to connect with people. Even when we start to come back together and whatever, I hope yeah. that you continue this at least every month. Yeah. And um, again, congratulations. Well, I was to start having them in my apartment again, but I can't open my doors anymore that's that's <laughs> one of the things that has hurt me the most is that my apartment door was open all the time to community there was always writing workshops in here and art you know and art events and open mics and whatnot the artists will come in here and, and you know discuss projects with me and now it's like i don't have that anymore so that's that's been difficult for me. So, you know, every sure, Sunday I had people. Though. Every Sunday I had people in my house. Parking um, though, parking, Angie, parking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but for but still we besides the people who couldn't find parking, I still always had people um come through whether it was just for five minutes or whatnot, but um Well now you're gonna have Myra flying in from Texas just to go to your apartment <laughs> once the door is open. <laughs> You know, so all right, I'm gonna go on mute, but one more time, yo, Roya, I love you, I'm so proud of you, and I came on to see you, and I'm glad I got to see you and got to hear your family and see everyone else. So I'm gonna be on mute off, but I'm gonna continue listening. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank you. Maida, are you ready? 
Unmute yourself, Maya, and you could um, read. Ooh, what happened here? Okay, how about um, Paola? All righty, hey y'all. I just wanna say first and foremost, I first experienced Roya's magic. I'm late to the game, like OD late to the game. I heard her voice last year at an event in Uptown Angie. I don't remember, it was the one that was like, yeah. We were one place. It was like the the was that 809. That yeah, perform. It was a uh, and I was sitting down. And Angie was giddy as hell the whole time, and I'm like, <laughs> what, you know, what's going on? Whatever, right? And then she's like, she's just giddy, and all of a sudden you get on stage, and I'm like this. From the first ten seconds, my vo like my whole demeanor just was like this, and I look at Angie, and Angie's just the giddy whole time. As hell, and I'm, I'm like, just sitting what? there, and I was like, yeah, I'm ready. And I'm and like, ready nobody fucking warned me. Nobody warned me. Nobody told I thought it was like an amateur. There's like, no way that we can warn you. It's something that you need to you you need to experience on your own. Yo, I and I was sober. People. So I was just like, yo, like this this person on stage, it was like I was completely captivated from that moment. I was like, Angie, I love you, but I'm also mad that I just found out. I'm so late. But anyway. I just ordered the audio book because I think that I feel like I will order the book itself because I love physical books, but your voice is truly from another lifetime and God bless your voice. Cause it's insanely captivating. Thank you, thank you. I need like a whole album <laughs> at least go on, YouTube, anyway. go on YouTube and look up all her stuff. Oh yeah. Word. I'm going to do that. We should, so, we should have a Royal Marsh watch party. Yeah, right? <laughs> Bro, you have your own fan club over here. If you ever having a bad day, just call me or Angie and we'll rally up. No, she knows. Every time I see Roya, I give her a big hug. I'm always ecstatic to see her. And I love the work that you do with all the kids. Like, I wish I had a teacher like you growing up. I needed you so badly at eight years old. So I really appreciate the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so here's my little poem. <laughs> um, I when I wrote this poem, I imagine like what my mother immigrated to this country at eight years, eight, 18 years old, and I imagine like what her conscience was saying to me when I was born, and what she just kind of, kind of her vantage point of everything that she had brought into this world for me before me. Um, so this is called the gifts I brought back for her. When I left, I sought to be awakened, awakened by the sweetness existing just outside the clouds of my mind. But now I return to myself, removing the shattered pieces from my bubblegum tongue, healing my words with the purity of the future I carried back for her. But now I return to myself, surviving a thousand revolutions for you. My crimson hands are tainted by the warfare between me and myself. Uh, between myself and I, sorry. But now I return to myself, nourishing my senses with the nobility of Venus, offering the planets in my palms to fasten the stars in my crown. But now I return to myself, returning to the rosy lakes of my consciousness, offering French silky lilacs to soften the hardened armor that is my mind. But now I return to myself, offering a kaleidoscope of hues I've neglected to see. But now I return to myself, offering a fistful of forgotten pigments of her soul. But now I return to myself with these gifts I've found for you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you for sharing. All right, Vanessa, you ready? Are you still there, Vanessa? Okay, don't know if she's still here. Um, you there, Vanessa? Yeah. Okay, your turn. Come on now. <laughs> so can you hear me clearly? Yes. I dug into my old stash. I haven't written in a few years, actually. I have half a poem that I've been working on. 
fantastic. So I picked something that I believe is a piece that you really like because we share a cause. Mm-hmm. Women, women. Yes. Oh, before I get into all of that, I don't think I've ever tell, told Roya how I feel about her. Let me look for her face so I can look at it. Roya, I got to tell you that I have, I've been around you for years. And I have always considered you a role model as a poet, as a woman, as an expressionist. I'm always excited when you're up on the mic. It's really cool to be hearing you tonight. I still remember that time we ran into each other in the supermarket, my neighborhood. And ever since then, every once in a while, I remember, and I kind of look around like, is she, is she around? <laughs> but I have a lot of love for you, and, and I want to thank you for what you have meant in my life. So all of that, you cry later. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right. Domestic violence is not poetry. Not roll off my tongue like honeydew, rose petals sweetly sweated after a sultry night of purple contemplation. Abuse does not stir my insides with a candied stick of catalytic candor. There's nothing inspiring about the grace of his manipulation. His smooth transition from gremlin to gentleman when the cops come to the door, Jekyll and Hyde might be impressed. Fuck those guys. He's so creative with his million different ways of letting me know that I'm small, worthless, pathetic, stupid, ridiculous. His prismatic array of criticisms do not make my world a brighter day. His persistent vigilance, listening to my voicemails, reading my emails, monitoring my Facebook, does not fill me with the warmth of a considerate lover. Domestic violence is not the sweet, tumultuous pain of struggle. More like an avalanche of boulders set off by him and carried off in a momentum of, why doesn't she just leave? Why does she put up with it? I would never let a man do that shit to me. Why doesn't she know her worth? Your flowered petals of ignorance fall upon my home, making nothing smell or taste or feel better. Meanwhile, he continues to be a haven of hurt power, control, not poetry. Thank you, Vanessa. I'm glad that we inspired you to read again. That was not your plan. <laughs> All right, Mayra, are you ready? There we go. Can you guys hear me? Beto, are you going to read? Hit me up on the chat if you're going to read, um, Beto. Um, go ahead, Maida. All right. Thank you so much for hosting. This is just amazing. My heart is filled with good Dominican American love. See that way uh -huh. I did that? So <laughs> <laughs> like, the minute I say American, we're all included, right? So it's That's good great. stuff. And I'm a New Yorker. I've been displaced and left New York in 1985 when I joined the military. And I don't care how far I go or how long I'm gone. My heart, everything about me is New York. And boy, people know it, right? And uh, I can't deny that. So I, I have very two very short poems. Uh, one is called Subway. Let's do uh, one first, okay? Because oh, I okay. want to get a chance, and then we're okay, going to Okay, very good. Round. Okay, very good. Oh, well, then I'm going to go to Mira Mami, because that's a better one. Okay. Mira Mami. Ven acá. Tu cita buena. I look down the street, and I cringe at the possibility of drawing any attention.